Ghostbusters for the NES is one of the most hated licensed titles in existence, but in this video game court, it's innocent until proven guilty. Court is now in session for a slimerific episode of Innocent Until Proven Guilty. Unless you've isolated yourself from society, you're probably aware of the Ghostbusters reboot. The movie courted controversy and divided audiences, but it also provided a great opportunity to review a game based on the franchise. And judging by the requests that flooded in recently, you all want to see me do just that. It may be a little late, but I'm going to give you what you want with the one, the only, <laughs> Activision's Ghostbusters originated on the Commodore 64 and various other computers in 1984, but was later ported to Nintendo's 8-bit console in October 1988 by Bits. No, not that Bits, fortunately. Bits Laboratory starts things off with the hilariously bad voice sample, which leads into the overworld map. Our objective is simple, the city is gradually becoming infested with ghastly apparitions and it's up to the iconic heroes to suppress the outbreak before the evil Gozer destroys humanity. The meeting with Gozer takes place at the Zool building, but it can only be accessed after either the PK energy reaches 9,000 or around 15 to 17 thousand dollars is racked up so the titular stars have to suit up and bust some ghosts. The focal point of the paranormal activity is indicated on the map by a red flashing light. Pressing A in front of the building will allow us to enter the haunted destination, but only after their tools of the trade are required. Apparently, the protagonists weren't prepared for their epic adventure, so they have to gather the necessary equipment at the shop. The shop houses a wide variety of items, which will come in handy for later portions of the journey, but the first step is to obtain a beam and trap. The hyper beam exceeds the default dole allotment, so we're pretty much stuck with the capture beam. The super and capture traps, on the other hand, are both within the budget. The capture traps hold fewer ghosts than the super, and we have to make regular trips back to the HQ to empty the contents as a result, so the super is an obvious no-brainer. Armed with their bust and best, the group can now traverse the mean streets to begin living up to their title. The driving sections are hindered by reckless vehicles that reverse into our path, and any damage received by coming into contact with them will deduct a few hundred dollars from the total. To add insult to injury, there's a gas meter at the bottom of the screen that can empty before reaching the location, causing the sprites to hop out of the car and push it to the nearest gas pump. The gas, of course, costs money, and if there isn't a sufficient amount left over to cover it, this happens. Luckily, there are refill icons that occasionally appear along the road, but they can be tricky to pick up, so this is where their job duties come into play. There are two ways to bust ghosts. They can be sucked up via the vacuum during the driving segments or collected through the traditional method. While the former is simply conducted by pressing A when the spirits are overhead, the latter is slightly more complicated. We assume control of the green clad figures and we have to determine the ideal spot to drop the trap. The trap can be placed anywhere on the ground within the dimensions of the space, but I found that the most efficient area was right in front of the building. The trap is dropped by a press of the A button and pressing it again will activate the proton pack. The B button switches between the two characters and they can move around horizontally within the lane to snag the pesky poltergeist. Once they're on the beam, another press of the A button near the trap will ensnare their captured content. Lather, rinse, and repeat for the majority of the mission until the prompt for the Gozer encounter appears. Gozer is wreaking havoc on the top floor of the Zool building and the path to a Eliminate the Menace is preceded by one of the most aggravating levels in the history of video games, the dreaded stairwell. The brave scientists have to climb 23 floors by constantly tapping A. The harmful specters that block their ascent are brutally unrelenting, and with a mere three lives as insurance by default, get ready to see this over and over again.
It's possible to increase the number of lives by purchasing the anti-ghost suit from the store, and the turbo function provided by the NES Max Advantage or Force Score somewhat eases the burden, but this is still a truly Herculean feat. I tried and tried for hours, failing miserably with each attempt, until I saw a post on the GameFAQs message board about an exploit specifically for this stage. It turns out that the doors on the stairwell aren't just for decoration. You can actually open them by pressing Pressing B, and doing so can reveal extra lives, which are accompanied by a sound effect or insta kill ghosts. If these fiends are behind the door upon the last remaining life, the invisible counter will go from 0 to 255, allowing us to breeze effortlessly past the foes as long as another door isn't opened. Once they've reached the apex, it's time for the climactic showdown with Gozer. Gozer can be a real pain in the ass. The battle basically takes the form of a bullet hell shooter with tiny flying demons and projectiles that are hard to avoid. Factor in the rapidly approaching Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man and this is one hugely frustrating fight. There's no glitch to easily eliminate the god, but I did learn that the strategy of firing off shots and retreating to safety ultimately worked like a charm. Defeating Gozer brings up one of the simultaneously best and worst NES endings. Needless to say, I love it wholeheartedly and I would proudly wear a shirt emblazoned with its typographical and grammatically errored beauty. In spite of its so bad that it's good ending, Ghostbusters for the NES disappointed and angered ardent fans all across the globe, but does that mean that it deserves all the hate? Let's find out in the breakdown! Like the classic saying goes, I ain't afraid of no ghosts, but I sure as hell am afraid of this Activision nightmare! The earlier iterations of Ghostbusters may have been fine and dandy by mid-80s standards, but this is primitive in comparison to other NES titles from the era. The gameplay is shallow and incredibly tedious, the eternally looping theme song wore on my nerves, and the double team finale of the stairs and Gozer can go straight to hell! I think my feelings towards this port can best be summed up as... Bit screwed up. Ouch. Harsh words from my past self. Though, I do agree to an extent. Is Ghostbusters tedious and primitive? It sure is, but that doesn't mean there isn't anything to enjoy about it. I honestly believe that Bits Laboratory did a decent job of capturing the vibe of the series, albeit in a flawed manner. I'll give you that the stairs are brutal beyond belief, but at least they programmed in a way to get around it. Plus, I can let a number of these nitpicks slide because of how awesome that end screen and intro voice sample are. No matter how many times I see or hear them, they never Never get old. Ghostbuster certainly has problems, but it's nowhere near the worst licensed tie-in ever made. In the case of Ghostbusters for the NES, I rule that the verdict is guilty! As amazing as that ending screen is, it doesn't change the fact that Activision and Bits Laboratory most definitely screwed up. I mentioned previously that this was a port of a mid-80s PC title, and it shows in how out of place it feels next to Contra, Super Mario Bros. 2, and their late 80s peers. The action, if you can call it that, is ridiculously repetitive and aggravating, making it absolutely deserving of its reputation, but its penalty shouldn't be as harsh since there are some some minor redeeming qualities to it. Anyway, now that I've served justice upon this despised cash grab, I've got a special Cygnus Destroyer video to work on. Be sure to come back for that, but until then, court is now adjourned! Thanks for watching everyone. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, click any of the boxes on the screen right now and you'll be able to watch a few more of my videos. And if you haven't already, be sure to click that red box right there in the corner and that'll subscribe to the channel and you'll be able to keep up to date with all my current content. Thanks again everyone.